lose 112 to 90. It is hopefully one of the worst performances of the season. I hope we don't get much worse than this. It is probably the worst game of Fred Van Vliet's career. There is a lot of negative to talk about from this game. There actually, surprisingly, is some positive to talk about from this game. But uh, the Raptors are a good team. This one game will not define them. But we do need to acknowledge it was a bad game and a lot of things went wrong. And we're going to do that in tonight's post-game show. So, chat, uh, if you want to just check in on it while we're going through, chat is having a meltdown. A lot of chat thinks that we're going to tank. This is the worst team ever. Fred Van Vliet is, should get traded because he is, frankly, the worst point guard of all time. And you know what? If you only watch Fred Van Vliet play basketball today and only today, you might have a case. But it is only today. It is only the one game. The Raptors were horrendous in that one game, but it is just one game. You lose this game by one, you're three and three. You lose this game by 100, you're three and three. You lose it by 22, you're three and three. The Raptors failed to show up tonight. They never led at any point. They had some spells where they made it a little bit interesting, but overall, it was not their night, and that is going to put it nicely. It was the night of one man, and that man was Tyrese Maxey, because Tyrese Maxey torched us all night. Now, you might be here thinking, especially if you didn't watch the game, you might be here thinking, Fred Van Vliet cannot guard Maxey. Horrible matchup for him. And you're right. You are correct. So correct that even Nick Nurse has recognized this, because Fred Van Vliet barely had any role guarding Maxey tonight. Tyrese Maxey shot the lights out of the goddamn country, and it wasn't Fred Van Vliet guarding him. Tyrese Maxey started the game 10 for 10, finishes 15 for 20, with 44 points, a career high. Other than that, the Sixers weren't that good. Harris goes 5 for 14. Melton goes 6 for 15. Harden, James Harden, goes 4 for 9. The Tyrese Maxey show was out here in full force, especially in the first half, which is what gave the Sixers that big advantage early on. And they maintained that advantage, especially in the fourth quarter where the Raptors really struggled offensively. The defense, honestly, wasn't horrendous. It was on Maxi. A lot of times, like Maxi hit his first three threes, all of which had a hand up and were contested. His next four were wide open, uncontested threes, and he hit all four of them. He started 10 for 10, like I said. Fred, like I said... Can't guard him, doesn't guard him well, didn't do many reps against him today. Offensively for the Raptors, there were some things to like tonight. Pascal goes 9 for 15 with 26 points, 10 rebounds, and 6 assists. He was 4th in the MVP ladder, and he actually boosted his claim for that spot with tonight's performance. OG, and I know we're talking a lot tonight, a lot of people talking tonight that Fred needs to get traded because he's so bad. Same thing was said about OG and Anobi just one week ago. He has a great game tonight. And actually, without him tonight, it would have been a lot worse. Because not only does he go 7 for 16 with 19 points, 9 rebounds, 2 steals. He was excellent on defense all over the board. Lockdown in some cases. He wasn't guarding Maxi. Not a good matchup for him either. Barnes goes 4 for 7. Super, super quiet in the second half. He was a minus 21, which was second worst for the Raptors. Partially the reason why his minutes... Uh, didn't get a bunch of them. Uh, Fred, now here's your, your, your stat line. Worst game probably of Fred Van Vliet's career. He goes minus 19, 0 for 11, with just one point, one for three from the line as well. Yeah, he was bad. Gary Trent, 14 points, worst plus minus on the team, minus 25. Bench does us no favors. They only get, I mean, not counting garbage time. The bench gives us 10 points. They had zero points going into, I believe, the fourth quarter. So, yeah, Fred didn't play well. Bench didn't help us. Tyrese Maxey torches us. Defense wasn't even that bad, other than on Maxey. Offense wasn't even that bad, other than Fred and the bench. But 
These are all parts of the game. Raptors don't shoot the ball well. Uh, you can chalk up a lot of that to Fred. They shoot really well because of Maxi, who shot 15 for, 12, for 20 and 9 for 12 from 3. Boost their numbers a lot because, again, other guys weren't that great. We don't shoot the ball well at all, and it showed in the, in the second half because, look, we kept them to 16 points in the third quarter, yet we only scored 22 in the third, only 20 in the fourth. And, and in the third, we made it a, we made it a 5.6 point game. We were right there and just it falters like defense was there. The offense very much wasn't. We just weren't getting enough offense from enough sources. Free throws as well. We we shoot 13 more free throws in them. Yet we go 62 percent, 62 and a half percent of the line. Um, very annoying. We outshoot them. Possession battle kind of goes our way and turnovers were not good either. That, that was part of the problem as well. Uh, which I should have addressed earlier. 17 turnovers for this team. They scored 25 off of those turnovers. Yeah, the Raptors didn't play well. Good news. It was one game. Oh, and by the way, Joel Embiid didn't play. And that's really frustrating to lose a very winnable game like this. The Raptors are 3-3. Three and three. Unlike the Sixers, by the way, who are now 2-4 and four with that win. So, you know, he could be worse off. This was not a good game. You're going to get very rarely a game like this from the Toronto Raptors, you are very, very rarely going to get a game like this from Fred Van Vliet. Um, the discourse that he should be traded because he has one bad game is ridiculous. And if you're saying that, then you need to look at yourself in the mirror because you are kind of an idiot. Um, Fred Van Vliet is a very important part of this team. Okay, let's do a little spiel on Fred Van Vliet here. And defensively, he was fine tonight. He was actually quite good defensively tonight and you noticed defense really falter especially in that third quarter because we held the starters out there for too long because they're starting to make a comeback as soon as we brought in that bench and friendly checked out defense fell apart and the Sixers got back to their 13 point lead eventually near the end of the game grew up to the 22 points that we see over here Friendly was fine on defense. Obviously, his offense was shit. I'm not going to pretend that it wasn't. He was 0 for 11, and we really could have used a, a made three-pointer from him tonight. Yeah? We could have used a made three-pointer or two. Uh, he went 77 straight games or so with a three-pointer made. That equals the franchise record set by him. And you know what? Next game, he's going to start a new streak because next game against the Hawks on Monday, he is going to start a new streak. It is one loss, it is one game. Fred Van Vliet is very important to this team. And y'all want to know why Fred Van Vliet still played all these minutes, even when he wasn't shooting the ball well? Because Fred Van Vliet's our best ball handler. He's a great playmaker on offense. His presence attracts a ton of gravity on the court because they recognize he's one of the best three-point shooters in this league. Didn't show it tonight. Players have bad nights. His gravity spaces the floor for the likes of other players like Pascal Siakam, Scotty Barnes, to enable more space in the paint, especially for Pascal Siakam, who, again, had 26 points tonight and was excellent for the Raptors. Defensively, Fred Van Vliet should be consistently getting all defense recognition because he is consistently near the top of the league in steals. He's consistently near the top of the league in deflections. Sometimes he is top of the league in deflections. He wasn't guarding Maxi tonight. Maxi went off. Fred can't guard Maxi very well, so we didn't put him on him. We're still not rotating outside to the other. We are still not defending him on the outside. Left Maxi open for three. Maxi's a good player. We know that. He's actually uh, a, a uh, most improved player candidate for me this season. And you know, I spoke about it on my, my betting show, the board NBA, uh, on the board NBA. It's called Pick and Roll. I spoke about it today. One of the bets that I didn't give was Maxi over 18 and a half points. I said it's a good good. It's a good bet. Raptors don't defend Maxi well. He's a good player. He showed it tonight. He absolutely showed it tonight. Fred did not show what he was made of tonight. One game is not going to define a player. I, I recognize it was like the worst game of his career tonight, but one game is not going to define Fred Van Vliet as a player and what he means to this team. And in, beyond all of the traits that I listed on court that make Fred Van Vliet an excellent player because he is such a good shooter and teams know that, the reason, one of the main reasons as well he is important to this team is off the floor. He's the leader. He's the floor general. He's the veteran presence. And a lot of the times, that is immensely important to this team. Tonight, no good. It doesn't make him a bad player. The Raptors tonight, no good. It does not make them a bad team. We know this team is talented. 
It was a bad night where just everything seemed to go wrong, even with the Sixers not having Joel Embiid available to play. It was a Tyrese Maxey show. He lit us up for 44. That was enough to separate this team along with Fred Van Vliet struggling. Guys, please just relax. Relax, okay? You know, if we do three of these in a row, blow it up. Sure, blow up. It is one game. We won two in a row coming into this game. We are 3-3 three and three, having played the Cavs playoff team, the Nets playoff team, the Heat playoff team, the Heat again, then the Sixers contender, the Sixers again contender. Okay, God, we're playing good teams. We're 3-3. Three and three. I'd rather be 4-2. and two. I'd rather be 6-0, and oh, but we're not. 3-0 and oh is not the end of the world here. Take a chill pill. Look at this team from a bigger, broader scope. Don't be myopic here and just only fixate on one thing that you're not happy about. Don't actively seek out something to be upset about. Don't actively seek out something to complain about because that's just a miserable way to live. Understand that we have a very talented team with a very talented point guard who was a freaking NBA All-Star last year. Bad game. Let's forget about it. Put it in the rear view. Two days off. Chill out. You know, there's, there's always like, you know, you have a game tomorrow. You, know, you forget about it immediately. You go play another game. Also, two days off. Reset. Recalibrate. You're another home game against the Atlanta Hawks. Tough team. Another playoff hopeful. Let's go win that game. Get back to above 500. And I promise you, Fred Van Vliet next week is going to make you all forget about this game when he starts lighting it up again. That was your post-game show. Usually they're in a better mood, but you know. We lost. Raptors lose this one. We do a post-game show, however, for every single Raptors game on Amateur Art Clips. Subscribe to that channel and drop a like there. If you're watching the live stream on YouTube, make sure you drop a like to show your support to the channel. I know you may not have enjoyed the game. I know you may not have enjoyed me getting upset with chat. It is what it is. But if you like the content, you want to support the content, the easiest thing you can do is drop a like. It only takes you a second to drop the like. And consider subscribing to Amateur Art Sports for more content just like this.